Welcome to the Love and Adventure. I'm Pastor Evans. I'm Mrs. Evans. You know what, wife? You know what I wish people would have told us before we got married? What? I wish they would have gave us some tips on how to stay married. Right. So today we're going to do some tips on how to stay married. On this episode, we marry. Now what? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you uh. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, ask the question, woman. So, husband. Yes. What are some tips to remember during marriage? Some tips to remember during marriage. During your marriage. During your marriage. Mm -hmm. So, I put together a very short list of tips that I think that will be helpful for married folks or people trying to get married and stay married. So these are your tips. These are my tips. These are your tips. Original tips for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very good. Very original. Very original. Okay. Here you go. So tip number one. Okay. Uh, root for your marriage like you root for your favorite sports team. Hmm. I am a diehard Laker fan. Diehard for And real. I always will be. Yes. But if you're going to be a fan of anything, be a fan of your marriage. Don't hit the table, husband. No, don't hit the table. If you're going to be a fan of anything, be a fan of your marriage, mm -hmm. right? Because it's wonderful to watch people make shots, but it's more wonderful to watch your wife make dinner. <laughs> so root for your marriage like you root for your favorite team. Right. Tip number two. Two. Okay, I was waiting. Very good. So, uh, a lot of times people think that uh, discussing purchases is an issue. Right. But my tip number two is discussing purchases is not demeaning, it's de planning. Like de planning? De planning. Right. So, it's not demeaning to talk to your spouse, your wife, your husband about uh, planning for purchases. It's planning. It's your money. You need to make sure that you guys are on the same page. All right? And tip number three, last one, spend as much time together as you can. Right. Separation is not helpful. You got married because you want to spend the rest of your life with this person. Spend right. as much time as possible. Right. Spend as much time as possible. Mm hmm You got some tips, woman? I got some tips. You want to ask me the question? Okay, here's the question. Question is... What are some tips to remember mm -hmm. during marriage? Right. So my tips. Your tips. I have four. She had. She had to. Do, uh, I had three. She had four. She had no answer. Um. So my first one I'm is. Trying to outdo me. The wedding isn't your marriage. That's a good one. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm this was only a test, right? <laughs> 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 the wedding was only a test. Right. It's not your marriage. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So great, fantastic, lovely wedding. Great, 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 great. Now you gotta make your marriage great, fantastic, lovely, right? Mm -hmm. This is not a test. This is not a test. Um don't share everything. If anything regarding your marriage with friends, families, best enemies, coworkers, whoever, don't share everything. Yeah. Okay, our, our pastor, he has a saying, uh, it goes, um, three can keep a secret if two are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't share everything right. in your marriage yes. with everybody. Yes. Okay, uh, that was my number two. Number two. Uh, number three, you can't change your spouse. Both people must want to change and grow together. Mm -hmm. Change hurts. Feelings, pride, and who you were as a single person um, will change, must change. Um, you ain't single no more. Right. Okay, you ain't single no more. Okay, and number four. Four. Um, you're not a lone wolf on your married island, okay? Every decision you make, good or bad, every attitude you have, warranted or unwarranted, every smile you have, every unkind word you speak will affect those in your household, mm -hmm. including your spouse. That's right. You're not a lone wolf on your married island. Okay. So husband, yeah. we just shared our tips. Tips to remember during your marriage. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and as I was reading, preparing for this episode, I came across a quote that I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. It is from Core Christianity, Six Things to Remember for a Successful Marriage. Fewer people are pursuing marriage today than ever before. And those who do are waiting longer to get married. Mm. As marriage has declined, cohabitation has increased, mm. nearly doubling. 39% of Americans say they believe that marriage is becoming obsolete. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. At the same time, concern for God's basic definition of marriage is declining. And these statistics, and these statistics have not even touched on the problems found within Christian marriages. Hmm. What do you think about that, husband? You know what? It's interesting because we did an uh, episode on cohabitation, right? And how uh, and how how many people think that that's the next logical step mm -hmm. in your uh, development of your relationship? So to hear that people think that marriage is on a decline and how it's been attacked and uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think marriage is obsolete. Right. Because uh, I'm in one. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it makes sense for it to seem like marriage is obsolete when apparently there's so many other options uh, for relationships. What do you think? Um, I think that it's a it's a tactic of the devil. Mm. Um because I feel like marriage is not necessarily, or people getting married is not declining. Mm -hmm. I just think that it looks like it's declining because what we see on TV um, during shows and things, or maybe our closest friends, or maybe the people in our family, mm -hmm. um, we don't see a lot of marriage in our families or something, but I think a lot of people are still getting married. Yeah. 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 And you know what, the, the one part in there said that people are waiting a little longer to get married. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, I think you should wait uh, mm -hmm. a little bit. And I, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you can, right? You should wait a little bit. I mean, but you shouldn't wait a little bit. Like, let's stay engaged for ten years. No, don't do that. That's ridiculous. Or, or if you're, if you're, near, near, near. <laughs> or if you're uh, engaging in in things that uh, will eventually hurt your future marriage, right. you should try to tighten that timeline up. Okay. But I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to wait to get married. No, yeah. I don't think either. Mm -hmm. Okay, husband, so in that same article, it um, outlined God's design for marriage. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk a little bit about it right now. Or I'm going to point a couple of things out. So in that article, it said marriage is for companionship. To live consistently with how God has created us, we need to strive for deep friendship. Mm -hmm. True intimacy is found not merely in close emotional or physical relationships, but also in a lifetime commitment of companionship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the next one, marriage is complementary. By God's design, when a godly marriage is begun, the two are better off because they complement each other. Mm -hmm. Such a reciprocating relationship is found only in marriage. Only in marriage. Next one. Marriage requires leaving and cleaving. Contrary to conventional thought, the marital bond is stronger than the parent-child bond. Mm -hmm. A man's wife must become the most important person in his life and vice versa. Each can no longer give their parents' view equal consideration. Yeah. That's huge. We had a pretty good discussion about this one. Uh, not you and me, but people who uh, saw previous videos had a pretty good discussion mm -hmm. about whether or not uh, parents' viewpoints and opinions should be considered in your marriage. But you know what? Um, just generally, when I'm on the social medias, mm -hmm. all um, of them. yeah, all of them. <laughs> um, there, there are uh, several conversations as to um, if your spouse got into it with one of your parents, right. whose side would you take? Right. I mean, uh, and, that's, and that would be an interesting question. Maybe we'll ask that question one day. But here's a spoiler alert. You always take your spouse's side. Otherwise, why would you marry them? Right. But you, I mean, you need to be respectful. Of course. But you always, I mean, you always need to be on the side of your spouse. Yeah. Unless they're... So far out there that it's like I can't even go with you. Right. But then, but that would be like abuse. Right. Right. That would be yeah, like that, some type like of a, abuse. Like, 
But I think to some degree though, it, even if your spouse is wrong at the moment. But that's not like gotta, way far. I'm talking about you like talking about, far out there. No, I'm, I'm talking about like a regular just disagreement or, 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 or argument or whatever. Even, right. if, even if you think your spouse is not right, mm -hmm. I think to some degree you take your spouse aside and then you talk to them when you get home. Right. I, because I you can't, that. Yeah, because you can't have that division because then the family was like, yeah. Yeah, because it, it interrupts enemy. your bond with your spouse. Right. Right. You don't want anything to break right. that bond. I mean, like um, some people include in their vows, mm. um, what God has joined together, let no one tear asunder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no one. That's including family members. Right. And or kids for that. that matter. Right. People forget that though. They do. Right. Yeah. People forget that. That's why some people like. That's why a lot of folks are struggling with marriage though too. Right. It's just perspective. Mm. That's why we're here. Okay. Marriage is celebrated physically. In marriage, neither person has power over his own body, but has given it to the other. Right. Each marriage partner must render conjugal rights. Right. Sexual intimacy should be looked at not as a chore, but as a sacred trust between partners. Marriage is for kingdom cultivation. Right. Married couples should evaluate how, as married people, they can serve God better together than they could apart. Mm -hmm. Although not the primary reason for marriage, God also ordained matrimony for the propagation of the human race and the establishment of godly seed. Right. That's a good one. I think it's important to remember that your marriage is a ministry. We talk about that all the time. Right. And God puts you together so that we can serve together. Yes. Marriage communicates the gospel. The best human marriage is a shadow of the glorious marriage between Christ and believers. Mm -hmm. Marriages that truly reflect God's marriage to his people begin with a believing relationship with the perfect bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so um, when I was reading over the article, again, the article is from Core Christianity, Six Things to Remember for a Successful Marriage. Mm -hmm. When I was reading over the article, I just thought that these were some really good points. Um, to pull out um, for uh, people who are looking to be married, mm -hmm. um, people who are on the road to be married, and then people who are married, but definitely people who are married to refresh your idea and your understanding mm -hmm. about this thing that you're a part of. Mm -hmm. All right. So as we're closing, we want to just give a few more tips because you can never have enough tips. It's a lifelong marriage. Right. Got to keep growing. And not so, all tips are for everybody. So exactly. take what you can use and move on. Right. Take what you can use and move on. Right. Right. All right. So what we got? Have a view of God that will guide you all of your days. Mm -hmm. Determine your core values as a couple. Your spouse is not your enemy. Okay. That's really important. The person that you marry not your enemy. That would be a bad idea to marry your enemy. Right. The couple that prays together stays together. This is like a t-shirt, right? Right. But it's really important that you spend time in prayer together and apart. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for each other and for others. Meditation, whatever you call it. Pray. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And you got to kind of be praying for your spouse. Right. And for yourself and your marriage, right? Right. So isolation is a subtle killer of relationships. Right. I think we, we talked earlier about spending as much time as you can with your spouse. And uh, I think that if we're isolated, if you're separated, um, that that just doesn't foster growth in your marriage. Right. If you're struggling, if you're having a hard time, stay together anyway. Try not to be separate as much as possible. Right. Uh, it's healthy to confess your sins to your spouse. Gotta right. be transparent. transparent. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, never use the D word, the divorce word, in your marriage. That right. shouldn't even be an option. You should. Right. I really, I really think that you should take that off the table before you even say I do, and decide before you get married that we're not going to even let this be an option. Right. You're not going to even consider the thought of it. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, then you might want to reconsider if you're ready to get married. Right. All right. And then different isn't wrong, it's just different. 
Right. It's important to point out here that every relationship, every mm -hmm. marriage, mm -hmm. is not going to be a carbon copy of your parents. Yep. It's not going to look like uh, Beyonce and Jay Z. Right. 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 So, different is not wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just different, and your marriage should be different. I wouldn't want my I wouldn't want our marriage like somebody else's. Right. And you might see other marriages that look like they're doing good. But you don't know what's going on in people's marriages until you're in them. Right. And I always say that um, when you become married, it's a new life. Yep. And that you have to feed, clothe, take care of it, take care of its physical mm -hmm. appearance, take care of the inside. Mm -hmm. And so that really just brings home the idea that no matter what the marriage looks like on the outside, you don't know the health of the marriage on the inside. You don't Very know good. what's going on. You don't know what kind of illnesses it's suffering from. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so husband, this next one is, I think is the most important of them all. Okay. Um, make your home a storm shelter. Make your home a place where husband, wife, children, anybody in your household can come to and feel safe outside of the storm. Mm -hmm. Outside of the storms of their lives, um, they have to do with work or school or parents or best friends. Make your home a storm shelter, mm -hmm. you know, with all the things that they need, food, love, heat, warmth, all the things. Right. Mm -hmm. Make your home a storm shelter. And our last one for today is your marriage must be built to outlast the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get married, you, you doing this thing, doing the thing forever and ever and ever, ever and ever until the kids graduate. Right. No, 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 no. 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 Not the kids. Yeah. You want to make sure that your marriage is built to outlast the kids. 18, 19 years, 20 years they move out. You wanna still be as much in love, as much committed, as invested in your marriage. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause our kids are little. I'm, I'm, I love them, but I'm not gonna be sad when they leave. Don't be a little sad, that's my babies. And go on vacations. Right. I only have to pay for two people. Right. Right, 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 right. I can um, eat my dinner and not have to make somebody else's for good. Okay, husband. We married. Now what? Mm -hmm. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the last uh, little bit, little tidbit. Remember, the only way your marriage grows in a healthy way is by each partner putting in the work. There is some work. There is some work. Put on your hard hat, bring your lunch pail. Do all the things. Put on your work boots, mm. get her done. But make sure you're cute though, okay? Cute. That too. Yeah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share these videos if you thought they were helpful. We think they're helpful, otherwise we wouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, see you next time.